So last week, I got my new British passport through and they returned my old clipped EU citizen's passport. So it's quite a symbolic moment to reflect on how I feel about Brexit. And it's not all doom and gloom. There is a route forward from here that could be quite positive. The last time I was on holiday with my family in France or Italy or Sweden, we could basically have chosen to live in those countries. Our EU citizenship gave us rights across an entire continent. And we had the right to vote for and petition a shared political project across that continent. Of course, the EU institutions are not exactly perfect, but I was happy to feel a part of that project that stretched across the whole of Europe and included most of the nations of Europe. But the UK decided it wanted to walk away from that Europe-wide project. And clearly, a lot of British people did not feel the same way that I did about being part of the EU. And while I'm still deeply frustrated with many aspects of the way that the Brexit process unfolded over the last five years or so, and I feel an ongoing sadness about the lack of welcome and support that it expresses to foreigners in our country. The reality is that Brexit has happened. We have left. Our wings have been clipped. So what to do about it now? Well, in theory, I would love to rejoin our sibling nations of Europe and thereby reassert our solidarity with them and regain Britain's seat at one of the most influential geopolitical tables. I will always feel not just English and British, but also European. But I'm under no illusions that Britain could or should try to rejoin anytime soon. For one thing, it is unlikely that the EU would want us back so fast. For another, our nation is still very split on the question of EU membership. And the last thing our society needs is to be spending yet another half decade banging on about Europe. There are just too many other important issues that we need to be addressing within our nation. For example, we have a hugely dysfunctional public discourse in this country. We have a lot of talented, compassionate, intelligent people who are repeatedly failing to have a coherent discussion about how a country should organize itself in the 21st century. We need to urgently work to improve that. So on this channel, I'm mostly going to avoid talking about the frustrating details of Brexit. It's good that other voices are holding the promoters of Brexit to account for all of their promises, especially as so many of the predicted economic and personal problems from Brexit are becoming the sad daily reality of many people's lives. But I want to flip the discussion around. How can our new situation help us build a more progressive political economy in the UK? I think there actually may be some positives from Brexit. For example, a big problem with introducing a universal basic income whilst being part of the EU is that there would be pressure, if not legal force, to give that basic income to every EU citizen who came to the UK. So there would be no legal mechanism to limit the total number of people who could claim that income. So, while I'm not exactly a fan of visas and borders, the fact that the UK has left the EU actually makes it more plausible for the UK to introduce a universal basic income. And that's worth exploring. Another area that quite a few people have already talked about is that the UK no longer has to comply with the EU's common agricultural policy. So that opens up the option for the UK to manage its farmland in new ways. And we could choose to do that to make it better for the environment while supporting local rural communities. A third example is that VAT is a tax that has significant legislation at the EU level. VAT has often been thought about as a regressive tax, but I think there are ways that that could be changed. Something I'll explore in another video one day because it's not exactly trivial. But at a basic level, 
the UK could now consider overhauling the VAT tax into a progressive form of consumption tax that is even higher on certain luxury goods and it could also progressively tax the luxury use of energy and other resources. I know there are many people who are not yet ready to look for any positives in our new situation. But there is much evidence to suggest that a majority of voters in the UK would prefer some kind of more progressive future. And I don't think that constantly revisiting the Brexit debates would be the best way to organise and motivate that majority. Rather, the kind of ideas that I've just mentioned show examples of how I think the progressive voices should embrace the potential of the UK's new ability to more rapidly change our legal framework. I will always be sad that Brexit has happened, about the lack of solidarity it expresses towards our European family of nations, about the lack of welcome it shows to foreigners in our country, and about having our EU citizenship stripped away. But there is now an exciting possibility for the UK to become a nation that more rapidly experiments with new progressive 21st century political ideas that are not traditional left or right, but are forwards. It is us, the voting population, that should be taking back control. So what do we want to do with our nation?